five foot eight, and I'm able to actually touch flat footed on this bike, which is really rare for adventure bikes. Generally, I need to slob up to the one side in order to touch the ground. What actually works really well is the turn signal canceling, and you know, you would think that it wouldn't really work that well, but even on just a lane change itself, it does work extremely well. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. You can remove it completely, so you need to completely turn it off yourself, but no need to do that when it works just as well as it does. You have a 12 volt charger on the left, USB on the right here for charging and Apple CarPlay. So other options on the bike, you have uh, heated grips, you have cruise control, you can also run this in a full manual, obviously with no clutch. I just push the M here and now I'm full manual and now I can downshift with my thumb, upshift with my finger and vice versa and it will automatically downshift itself if I don't touch it as I'm slowing down. It will downshift itself just like an anti stall. Nice pull on the bike, good power. Only around 100 horsepower, but some pretty good torque. Has some good low end. Something like a DCT, something that works really well is what they would call what you call a tip in. So I'm in full, uh, full auto here, and if I want to just drop a gear now or drop two gears, I can just click on my on my lever there, drop a gear, get up into RPM, and then I can go, and then it will stay in automatic. See how it works in the twisties here. Super smooth in the corners. That 19 inch wheel makes a big difference for the road stuff. For sure it limits the off road slightly. But I think the owners of this have spoken and the consensus is most people are just doing mostly asphalt with a little bit of gravel off road trails, but no hardcore off roading. These are big bikes to manipulate in tight trees can be done, but uh, most people purchasing these bikes are riding on the street with all their kit, saddlebags, doing big rides. Obviously, Honda's known for the reliability. Most people are buying this bike for that 100, 200,000 K on this motor, no problem. I have the windshield set to fully high. I'm wearing a motocross helmet with a peak and I can just sit straight up. I have no air pushing the top of my helmet at all. Really, really comfortable. Something interesting with the DCT here is you have a G mode. So the G mode, when it's active or off, when it's actually off, you're gonna have a little bit more clutch slip to have a smoother transition in between gears. And when you go to the active mode, it's going to have a lot more crisp shifts, a harder clamping on the clutches for good throttle response and active movement on the bike. 